Hello, hello. Another week, another episode of your favorite debating podcast, right, Sebastian? I, I would not have the arrogance to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> so Doug hates me because... I, I have a recording of this. <laughs> sometimes we repeat some of the recordings so that we get it right. And I just said in the previous attempt, in the previous take of this podcast episode, that it was the, the, the best podcast altogether, not just the debating podcast. So this time I've just changed my, my side yeah flipped around and as you uh, often do yeah i think there's not a single debate that we agreed on haven't we (laughs) the the whole point of the podcast (laughs) yeah it it turns out i like you more and more the longer we do this maybe that's a recipe for a good friendship to disagree on everything so you're not surprised when when this happens i'd like to submit a request today because you keep mentioning about the friendship here but honestly this is a lot of work and I feel that as the co-CEO of this enterprise, I would like to get some compensation. When have you been promoted to CEO? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not talk about promotion. I'm talking about co-CEO, uh, at least co-founder. Maybe I'm the COO or whatever I am uh, in this. But yeah. I'd like to get some compensation. And if possible, and look at this uh, transition, I am totally fine if you impose a limit on my pay. You're totally fine. Well, that fits my own plans because my compensation will have no limits. So we 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 are set up perfectly well. Me being <laughs> the frontline CEO and you being second in charge, that obviously needs to be reflected in our compensation, I think. Um, I think I kind of messed up, but I guess I have to stick by what I said. But uh, I guess you've noticed what I've done here. And if the listeners are wondering what's going on, it's only because the motion today, and I always try to make a transition into the motion, and that's no limits to executive pay. This is the motion today. The flip of the coin has decided that I will be against that motion. That means I will try to defend the fact that we do need limitations to the pay and the compensation we give to executives. And Dirk, the flip of the coin, has decided that you will be against any limits whatsoever. You want the CEOs, COOs, the C-levels to be greedy and have everything that they want because after all, what? Why, the best. why do I have the feeling that you're already trying to frame me in a certain way? Let's be more open to that. Yes, uh, we will have an argument over the need for limits of, to executive pay. And uh, are you prepared? Are you ready? I am ready and let's get started. Okay, let's do this. Sebastian goes first and argues against the motion. During the height of the banking crisis in 2008, do you know what the bosses were worrying about back then? Was it really? It's a real question. The big worry they had was their compensation. Really? Was that really the most pressing thing they had to worry about back then, especially the bankers? Let's put the facts straight. The ratio today between the highest paid and the lowest paid employee in big corporations in the US is 300 to 1. That that means that the lowest paid worker in one of these big companies is paid 300 times less. He would have to work 300 years, three centuries, to make what the boss or the highest paid executive in the company makes in one year. Here's the problem. It makes people envious, jealous, Now, you may laugh at this. You may say, oh, but no, people should not be jealous and envious, even if it's unhealthy for their morale. Well, it's, you know, tough luck. Let them deal with it. People think it's unfair. Well, so be it. It's life. It's free market after all. It's capitalism. That's how the world works. But here's how we work as human beings. Emotionally, whether rational or not, it does not matter. And the experiment that I'm going to talk about just very briefly now will illustrate that. You have two monkeys, capuchin monkeys. You give them, both of them, uh, cucumbers. You reward them with cucumbers to achieve a task. They both see each other getting the cucumber when they achieve the task. Now, one of the monkeys, instead of getting a cucumber the next time, gets a grape. Now, a grape is sweeter than the cucumber, so they're more happy. But the the other monkey 
does not get the grape. He also he continues to get the cucumber. What happens? When he sees the other monk, he gets the grape. He throws his pieces of cucumber and gets very angry. He doesn't want to eat it anymore. He's not happy anymore. And here's the thing. Here's the conclusion of this. The fact is we are emotional. So the fact that we see things are unfair will affect our health, will affect our morale, will affect our motivation. So if anything, it is also important to set the record straight and put things more in proportion of each other. I have more arguments. I'll leave this for afterwards. But yes, we need limits to executive compensation. Now, it's Dirk's turn. Let's hear his argument. In 2013, Switzerland held a referendum to ask if executive pay should be limited and capped. Back then, the voters came to the conclusion that this is not something that should become law. And I believe they were right. So you make a lot of statements. You basically appeal to jealously and you kind of make a statement, a broad statement with a broad brush that, uh, that people are paid in the same ratio, whether it's a small company or a big company. That's number one. So I doubt that in a company with less than, say, 100 people, the senior executive really makes... 300 times as much as the lowest paid uh, worker in the same company, number one. So you're comparing the, the Forbes 500 company and the executive working there with the little man having his, I don't know, plumber shop or the one working in uh, construction. And that's not a fair comparison. Not in scope of work, not in type of work, not in responsibility. Secondly, those monkeys, if I would be such a monkey, I would get angry too. Because those two monkeys, and you said so yourself, they do the same tasks, they perform the same work. And yes, if you get 300 times as much money than I do, despite having the same type of work, then I would get damn angry. But that's not true for the CEO. Our CEO does a very different job than I do. And our CEO is responsible to secure the jobs and the business for close to 100,000 people, that's a different ballpark. And maybe then 300 times as much money is just what the market calls for. No, please, let's not put limits to executive pay. I will argue that this is even damaging. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his rebuttal. Does the CEO of a big company really does 300 times more complex work than the lowest paid employee? Or even if you look at the average, uh, the middle management layer, does, do they, does the CEO really do 100 times more effective or complex work? I raise the question. I'm very skeptical, but we can ask the question. Here's the thing that I want to shift the problem away from just the actual performance and, and the pay which is which goes with it. I think by by having this debate and the general debate that exists in the news because of this high profile discrepancy and differences in compensation, I think it moves the problem away from bigger problems like the quality of leadership, ethics, and actual long term performance. I think we're just obsessed with this short term, maybe annual results, which drives executive pay largely today. Bonuses are paid on yearly results uh, in most big companies. And I think it shifts away the problem for maybe deeper issues and, and the deeper thinking we need to have at the executive level. And here's another perspective here. Research in the US has shown that above $70,000 of annual compensation, there's no statistical significance in increased happiness. So my proposal here is to redistribute uh, more or less anything that's above, let's say, 100, 200, 300 thousand dollars a year, to all the employees which are not making 70 thousand. Not so they reach 70 thousand, but my point here is these outrageous compensation could actually make a difference in many, many employees' lives when it's making no difference whatsoever in the lives of these executives who are already multimillionaires. Some of them are billionaires. So I think. Anyone who's below $70,000 would welcome any extra dollar, even a dollar, even 10, even 100, right? So yes, a million, 10 million, 100 million that executives get paid extra could actually be redistributed to even companies the size of 10,000, 20,000 employees. It still makes a difference to everyone else. And it's still possible. Here's the thing. It's still possible to give enough incentive to prospective CEOs 
who in turn would be more inclined to think about the long term instead of maximizing metrics just to get maximum pay during their short tenure in general as a CEO or as a C-level executive. Here's one um, daring thought I have as a suggestion here. I propose that instead of any limits to executive pay, I suggest that we don't pay them. No pay. No pay. And let's see who takes the job. Let's see who takes the executive job. I am sure you'll have candidates. And maybe not the worst ones. And now on to Dirk. Sebastian, Sebastian, I didn't know there's a socialist sleeping in you. You want to redistribute the money that executives make. You want to invite them to work for no pay at all. Uh, I do think you still don't make an apple to apple comparison or oranges to oranges. You compare apples and oranges. And here's why. You ask me, is the, is the work that our CEO is doing 300 times the complexity of my work? Probably not. But I say this, this, probably the responsibilities on his shoulders is easily 300 times as much. My team is, what, 12 people? 15 people? Something like that? Larry Page's team is a little bit larger, I would say. Let's take one of the best paid CEOs of all time. Tim Cook, $400 million. I think if Apple would go down... That would be a massive hit for the US economy and not only impacting Apple, it would impact way more people that, uh, around him. And he, he, he is receiving a salary proportional to that responsibility instead. Instead of just making the cheap argument and saying, hey, if you want to earn 300 times as much, the weight you lift needs to be 300 times as heavy. Let's look at the whole thing. And you make a market argument and that works for me as well. Imagine... In the country of Sebastianity, you have CEO jobs that offer no salary at all. And then Dirk Topia comes along and says, you know what? You receive an honest salary. Where do you think will the talent go to? Which of those two countries will uh, manage to attract that person? And sometimes it is about the right experience, the right network, the right connections that make companies of that type and size successful. So no, just turning down the salary will not help because there will always be a country around that is willing to pay market share. And that is maybe my most important and final argument. This is a market decision. So CEOs make as much money because apparently it's worth as much to shareholders and the market and the companies make enough money to pay that salary. Whenever the CEO is not worth it, maybe the company goes bankrupt, then the market resolved for the problem. And ne never in the, in the entire history of humankind, it was a good idea to go heavy handedly in and really regulate uh, market forces the way you suggested. There are subtler ways. For instance, maybe we should lock uh, CEO salaries for a while to see if their actions really have a consequence to the company and not unlock it if the company goes south after they move on. Things like that. So no, no limits to executive pay. The market decides and they have more responsibility than you and me. So maybe it's also worth it. Thank you. Final statements. Sebastian goes first. Okay, if it's free market, uh, really, if we don't have to impose regulation, then probably what would happen is that there would be no minimum wage for the lowest paid employees. So yes, sometimes it's not as simple as saying it's free market decides you need regulations. You say talent would go away. Let me give you an, an analogy here. If the presidents of republics and prime ministers, who would have probably the opportunity to work in the private sector and make a lot of money, well, actually, they do decide to serve the public service. They don't make a lot of money in most democratic countries. Right? So it is possible to attract actually good talent. I'm not saying all government employees and all prime ministers are great, but you could, some of them are not stupid. There, some of them are smart. Uh, they could make much more money probably without being in the administration. Here's the thing. The 300 times ratio of uh, executive pay versus lowest employee paid compensation is an average. Some people will make even more. It's like more closer to 500 for the highest best paid executive compared to the lowest paid employee. Uh, and you mentioned Larry Page, the co-founder of Google. When he was CEO, by the way, his compensation was $1.
right? He did not need to get compensation. He already owns the part of the company. He's already a billionaire. So indeed, I think when the incentive is right, these CEOs can maybe focus on what's good for the company, for the employees, for the market by focusing on the long term. So yeah, let's go with limitations. It's not about making it crazy small. We could talk about, we didn't even talk about thresholds. It could be a 10 times ratio or 100 times ratio. That would be already insane. But I do think in the end, we do need some regulations and some limitations to ex executive pay. Dirk. So Larry Page gets one dollar salary because he has so much share in the company. Guess what? That's the same. That same is true for Tim Cook. He got four hundred million dollars compensation right now, worth seven hundred million dollars. And you know what? The majority of this compensation is actually shares in Apple. So I I'm sorry. Either you want to limit executive pay or you don't. Just decide what which side you're on. In general, even true for presidents and leaders in the political area. They usually are paid very well on side deals and they are usually very paid very well before and after their engagement in politics. So even that argument does not hold much water. In the end, it comes down to this. If you have a market where people with a very rare skill set and CEOs have a rare skill set are competing with, with each other, there is a salary to be paid. There is a market price that develops and whatever that market price is. I think should be allowed to pay. There's no place for us and no place for society to really regulate this to the point that you suggested. Maybe regulating when things are paid out might be the smarter move though. I would be with you on that just to avoid the, the one-trick uh, one ponies or the people that are clearly incompetent. So no, no limits to executive pay. Thank you very much. <laughs> can't believe you said you was trying to do the comparison between Larry Page, who's the co-founder. He did not get shares as compensation. Tim Cook got the shares as compensation, not Larry Page. He has shares, which is yes, why he's he, a billionaire. But he's, he, it was not as compensation. He created the company. Yeah. He, he did not get it like, oh, from the sky. Thank you for rewarding me. He created it. I yeah. think that's not a fair comparison. Yeah, but you made it's the not same. Compensation. But you you didn't make a fair comparison either. That's the reward he gets. He he is rich, so he he he's not taking a salary. Boo hoo! And uh, can, you cannot really say the same for Tim Cook. Should he should he found his own Apple in order to warrant a uh, no, uh, major no, no, share? No, that was not my point. Yeah. So Larry Page. Um, is probably an off comparison in any case because he is the founder, but not every CEO probably. is a founder. I, I agree, I agree, but I, I did not make the call for people to, I, I did make the call in a, in a joking way for them not to be paid at all. But my point at the end was to say, well, we can talk about a threshold. It, it could be 10, the ratio, it could be 100 times. Larry Page is, a, is an outlier, indeed, because he's a co-founder. And because he has uh, is one of the richest men of, uh, walking this earth planet, and indeed, if you if you are that, probably the power that comes with being the owner of or the the co-owner of but Google is, is be, more important. I don't think it should be related to how much wealth you have, because in that case, you could say that for any work, any job that we apply for, we're going to look at your assets, and if you have above a certain threshold, then you don't get paid. Do you think that would be a massive revolution, which would not, which would not, anyone would not accept, no one would accept. Well, then you go to China and, and get paid uh, handsomely there. I mean, no, that's that's called bribes. Not the, the, same. the point the point really is um, it's 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 Larry's decision not to take any salary. He could take a very nice salary if he wants to. And he decides against that and that everybody could do that. Tim Cook could do that. You can do You can just refuse to take your salary. Everybody can do that. No one ever does that. So people calling for a cap on executive salary often don't consider their own salary unfair. They just consider the much higher than their own salary unfair. I think it really depends on the on the maths and the thresholds we're talking about. If we're talking about a ratio to, of, of one to a hundred, then honestly, we're not affecting that many people. And I think it's totally fair to have at least a discussion and if necessary, redistribute things. I don't think it's going to change the face of the world if we don't pay someone 400 million and instead gets 100 million. It makes no difference to their lives, it's like strictly no difference. But it can make a difference to the state if it's in taxes or to the rest of the employees if, if it goes through compensation or through R&D or through whatever. It's going to go somewhere else except in one person's pocket. It never goes into one person's pocket. See, that's a misconception. 
It's not that, you know, it's not that Tim Cook receives his 400 million or 700 million by somebody coming with a with a large box of money and paying it and then he puts it into his basement. It's like uh, it's lying on the bank. The bank is investing with that money. That investments go to companies, small and large businesses alike, goes into it's just redistributed. The the I, only difference is the only I don't know what they do with their billions. Maybe it's not in an American bank, maybe it's in the Bahamas or Pan Panama. Who they knows? still Maybe. they still invest it. That's not just a number no, in some I don't computer know. system. Maybe it's in a trust and it and it's sitting there quietly without being taxed and not investing. How do we know? It's all like a lot of Because the that's how that's how the banking system works. The banks lend money to others and the money is not coming out of thin air, it's coming out of the bank accounts that sit somewhere and they invest that. So the really important question is how many millions is the your threshold? How many millions are accepting a salary before you say, I don't want any more in salary? Well, you know, I used one data point in the US, which is the level of, of happiness that people feel when they have more or less than 70,000 US dollars. This is an average. Of course, this may not be applicable in San Francisco or New York City. So I don't know. It's easy to like, even if we, be, if we, if we want to be conservative, Even if we want to be conservative, let's say 10 times that amount, 10 times the threshold of happiness. That's $700,000 a year. What do you think about that? I don't think 99.99999% of the population would have any issue with that because they would never attain that level anyway. So yeah, I'm, I'm randomly saying 10 times the level of happiness, $700,000. Let's say a million to round this up. A million dollars. I mean, the point is uh, that, well... I, w I would be happy with a million right now from my current perspective. But coming back to the two monkeys, if you, for instance, uh, if you, for instance, get uh, 700,000 and then you learn that I, for the same role, managed to get 15 million, then you will probably go to, to our, our joint boss and say, I demand at least as many millions as Lirk gets. The difference with monkeys, and I didn't want to react to this, is that in the monkeys, it's a simplistic uh, experiment. Right, there is no such thing as an exact. I mean, no such thing. It depends for what kind of job we're talking about. But for white collar workers, it's very unlikely that your profile, your experience, the way you conduct your work is exactly the same way I conduct it. It's going to be very difficult to assess. So, this is how compensation can vary for something which looks like similar jobs because maybe you come with a different skill set. Oh, it turns out you speak German better than I do, and it turns out German is more required in your job than anything else that's so that's why 50, comparison with worth monkeys. 50 millions i say i tell you <laughs> yeah i understand well, what I, you're i'm saying. glad to know you get paid 50 million i think i'm I, it's good that i have a one-on-one -on -one with my boss coming up in two days <laughs> and I'll, i'll bring this up because i do have uh, some issue with that not i'm happy for you but i'd like to uh, make a, a a request but the point is with the monkeys is that it, it's to illustrate how the brain of other mammals work and we're actually very similar. Um, we actually have this tendency to an emotional gut reaction, even though we may find rational arguments and, and be maybe supposedly happy for others getting promoted or getting better pay. But in the end, we do react emotionally. I mean, in our guts, we have this feeling, oh, it's unfair. It's not about having the same, by the way, necessarily. It's about having this impression that it's not an equal treatment. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether the science is behind it or not in terms of whether it's fair or not. It's just that we react this way. And I think it creates unnecessary disruption in people's lives. I'm with you That's on that. All. I agree. I agree. In the end, in the end, I do think it's hard to draw the line. And where I really agree, I do think there are plenty of CEOs out there that are definitely in the end not worth the money. So if you look at Tim Cook's work in Apple, that was an example I came up with. Clearly, Tim Cook kind of secured billions of uh, dollars for Apple and ever since Tim Cook started uh, running the place there was significant growth the company seemed to strive he's a figure that uh, seemed to steer clear ship so maybe that's worth more than some of the bankers that you were suggesting and that's that's where it probably would would be easier to convince I do think a golden parachute that's the kind of thing that gets me angry I'm not angry about them being paid very handsomely but I would like to see some punishment when they kind of kill a company through incompetence and still retrieve money in obscene uh, amounts so thank you for listening 
as always, if you have an opinion or if you are convinced with either side, please go to todebate.net and vote uh, thumbs up or thumbs down, depending if you're in favor or against the motion based on what we said. And don't hesitate, email us, send us feedback if you have any other arguments that we could have used or any thoughts, any suggestions, any final words. No final word. Thank you so much, Sebastian, as usual. Very, Thank you very much. Very interesting and fun debate. Likewise. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.